have another prophetic word for you. And a tropical storm went through the East Coast this past weekend. And uh, it went through my whole area, Virginia Beach, Virginia. Um, just some trees and branches down, you know, a lot of a lot of things going on with the water. Okay. Big surges on the coast and on the water. Now, there wasn't any damage per se, but there was a lot of, let's say, exposures happening on the shoreline, the eastern shoreline of the United States of America. And can God bring a whirlwind to break down the enemy's stronghold? Yes, God has a whirlwind. Yes, he does. He has a whirlwind. I've taught you about that many, 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 many times. So I've got another prophetic word to share with you all. But first, I want to show you something, okay? David, would you please put up the map? Oh, my gosh, it's 111. 111, right here. What does 111 mean? 111 is Deuteronomy 111, that God will bless and multiply us a thousand times more than we are. So just decree that Deuteronomy 111 blessing. Say, Father God, thank you that you are blessing me and increasing me. My finances, my prosperity, my harvest, a thousandfold. Come on. Let's take that 111 word and say, Father God, I thank you that you are increasing me, my household, my blessings, my finances, my harvest, a thousandfold. That's what that 111 means when you see 111. Now, 1111 means something completely different. 1111 means wake up, pay attention, you're about to see the glory of God. Okay. Um, I have another prophetic word for you. Um, but first I want to share, because um, there was a tropical storm this past weekend, and it went up the east coast of the United States. But there wasn't hardly any damage whatsoever, okay? Um, lots of water surges and things like that. Uh, and the Lord reminded me, the blood of Jesus Christ is protecting the entire East Coast from storms of the enemy, right? From anything of the enemy. However, there are such a thing as whirlwinds from God that come to break down the strongholds of the enemy and uh, cleanse, expose, and reveal. I believe that's what this tropical storm was. It was Ophelia, but I believe that's what this tropical storm was this weekend. I believe God had his hand on this storm, and he was doing things to cleanse, break down strongholds, root things up, and expose things. I want to remind you that our, our, our shorelines are protected. So, David, would you put up that map of, of our shore? Okay. So, this is the map that is on my website, annamarystrawhand.com, Land Assignment Index. All of the red dots that you see on the map is where uh, I Boots on the Ground intercess, Intercessor, led by our ministry, has done repentance in that place of all the sins of the land going back to its birth and has done communion in that land, cleansing the land, redeeming it back to Jesus Christ, okay? And uh, also poured the anointing and uh, consecrated and dedicated all back to God. If you look, the entire coastline of the United States of America has red dots, particularly East Coast. Look at that. We're covered. Our entire coast, east coast, west coast, south coast, the Gulf, is all protected by the blood of Jesus. Come on. Now, we could use more boots on the ground intercessors on the west coast, uh, doing communion on the coastal areas and on the shores doing the water assignments and the land assignments and the gate assignments. 
Look at that. Uh, give me a closer up of the East Coast, David. Look at that. It's like a line of the blood of Jesus. All those red dots are communion. First, those every place has been repented for of sins and covered in the blood of Jesus, so there's no legal right of the demonic anymore. It's been stripped. And now the blood of Jesus is speaking there, a better word. I mean, there's so many red dots in Virginia Beach. and <laughs> They're like overlapping each other. But look at Florida, all the way around Florida, all the way down the East Coast, all the way up the East Coast, all the way around the Gulf. We definitely need more. Right? This will protect it from... Any storms brought on by evil or anything brought on by evil. Thank you, David. If you want to learn how to do a land assignment, water assignment, or gate assignment, go to my website, com. land assignment index, where we train you up, show you how to do it, give you the prayers, right? And so you won't get any demonic pushback, okay? And now revivals are happening in this area. I love that revival is happening um, in Chicago. That is along a lake. You know, if you are along a lake, right, Chicago is along a lake. Um, we see revival happening in Chicago right now. We have boots on the ground there. We see revival happening all up and down the East Coast. We see revival happening in Los Angeles. That's right. I mean, look at God. If you don't know if a land assignment has been done in your town, Valerie, how do you know if a land assignment has been done in your town? Go to my website, animastrohan.com, click on Land Assignment Index, and pull up our map and zoom in on your town and see if there's a red dot there. If there's no red dot, then you need to do one. And we have all the training and everything how to do it on that page, uh, how to get the land assignment kits and the water assignment kits and the gate assignment kits. Now, you don't have to have a kit. It's helpful. You know, you can have your own communion and, you know, and all the prayers. We have everything there to teach you. We suggest the kit because it makes it much easier to do this, okay? Okay, my friends. I have another prophetic word for you. And this prophetic word is connected to um, the waters receding, the draining of the waters. Come on. We've had lots of words about floodings coming in to cleanse, but now I'm giving you a word about the draining of the waters to reveal and expose. Come on. And what is the Lord speaking right now? from the draining of the waters and what exposure is going to be coming forth and what to expect and how to pray. So with every prophetic word, because I'm a prophetic intercessor and I'm a watchman, I watch what the weather is doing. I watch what God is doing with the weather and I discern whether it's demonic or whether it's from God, what God is speaking and how we should pray. Okay. How we should pray. Now, I'm going to screen share with you here with this prophetic word. Uh, okay, I'm I'm sharing with you all my Facebook here. And um, I saw this, this post on Saturday. We were having uh, a tropical storm coming through the East Coast, particularly to the state of Virginia, through North, South Carolina, North Carolina, the state of Virginia, through the Outer Banks area of North Carolina. Now, I saw this post, and I posted it um, Saturday night, and it says, uh, I said, wow, this is just south of where I live. I'm in Virginia Beach, Virginia. This is prophetic. Exposure of hidden things from our government and past wars coming forth. This is in a sound. It will be spoken for all to hear. This is time of the awakening and the unveiling, right? 
Jeremiah 33.3. What does Jeremiah 33.3 say? Uh, Jeremiah 33.3 says, Call unto me, says the Lord, and I will show you the hidden thing, the secret thing, the thing you do not know, what you need to know right now. He'll even show you what the devil doesn't want you to know. Okay, now this picture is in the Outer Banks of North Carolina. Okay? It's um, in a sound called the Pamlico Sound. Okay, that empties out into the Atlantic Ocean. All right. I've been on this bridge a couple of times. My husband, Michael, and I, we love to travel down to the Outer Banks. We love to go, uh, you know, down to Kitty Hawk, and we love to go all the way down to Hatteras. Okay. And a lot of times we, uh, we cross over this sound to go into North Carolina it's just a really nice little trip to go down there, a little day trip for us. So I have driven over this sound and this bridge many times, and the water is usually pretty high, okay? You, water is usually pretty high. So what you are seeing here is this tropical storm that came through this weekend. What it did is it pulled all the water out of the sound. What is a sound? A sound is a body of water that uh, kind of stems off the ocean. And what it does, it's like an inlet, but it goes up into an intercoastal, all right? And um, it's called a sound. Now, there's three major sounds in the Outer Banks. There's the Kuratik sound, which is closest to me. The Kuratik sound is about maybe five seven miles from my house where I live right now, <laughs> okay? The Kirk Sound, which is like also an intercoastal. Uh, I, did, I, I did my first water assignment there on the intercoastal that goes to the Kirk Sound, me and Jeanette Strauss. So where me and Jeanette Strauss and Jennifer prayed at Mungin Point in the year 2022, and we put the communion in the water, we put the salt in the water, we put the stick in the water, we put the anointing in the oil, uh, water. That would have washed into the Kuratuk Sound, into the intercoastal, and all the way into where I'm showing this picture right now. <laughs> because we commanded when we did that water assignment there that day for the communion, the oil, the, the salt, the stick, right, to spread out and wash out into all of these intercoastals, into all of these sounds, into all the way down the coast. We spoke those words. You can go back and watch that video of me and Jeanette Strauss when we did that that day and we spoke it. So the, the blood of Jesus would have washed all the way over here to where you're seeing this picture. Now, what happened was in this storm, I believe this was a whirlwind of the Lord. Because what it did is it completely dried out all of the sounds. It dried out the Kuratuk sound. It dried out the Pamlico sound. It dried out all the sounds. Dry them out. Drain them. It drained them. It drained them. Drained them. And everything in those, you should see how huge these sounds are. Everything that was beneath the water in these sounds is exposed, literally drained the water down to nothing. And this is an old World War II U.S. ship, U.S. shipwreck that is has been under the water in this sound for many, 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 many years. And for the first time in history, it is completely and fully exposed now why is that prophetic god will give us signs in nature of what he's doing in the spirit on earth as it is in heaven god will give us signs in nature of what he's doing in the spirit literally god is draining the swamp and he's exposing everything that is hidden underneath. 
And why would a World War II ship be exposed? Well, I believe because it's coming to light and being exposed right now, who is responsible for most of the wars in our nation and across the world? And it's been the deep state, the Illuminati, and the Freemasons. And this is all beginning to come to light. And these are corrupt government people. We call them the swamp. And I believe in the coming days, you're going to see things of our corrupt government, of the Illuminati, of the Freemasons, and others involved, certain individuals, certain families, certain leaders across the world, and the evil that they've been responsible for that has cost millions of lives over the years. God is draining the swamp. He's revealing everything that's been hidden according to Jeremiah 33.3. I believe this is a manifestation of these sounds being drained on the East Coast and warships being what? Revealed because who builds the warships? the military-industrial complex. And there's another reason why we keep having wars. Needless wars. Why? Why do we keep having these needless wars? Why? Because they want to build artillery. That's how they make their money. So the Lord is exposing the military-industrial complex that they are doing made-up wars. They're causing wars on purpose. So they can build artillery and ships and things like that to make money. Exposing our corrupt government leaders that are in cahoots with them. Exposing the United Nations, a stinky, vile, disgusting thing. Father God says that the United Nations is a stench to his nostrils. This happened the same weekend, the same week that the United Nations was having their meetings. I'm telling you, my friends, get ready for huge exposures. God is draining the swamp. These evil people will have nowhere to hide. Nowhere to hide. He's ripping off the scales. He's ripping off the veils. He's draining the swamp. He's draining it all. He's bringing in his whirlwind. Now, this was a sound. This was very prophetic. This was near Rodanthe, North Carolina. A World War II shipwreck exposed when the sound disappeared. Now, she said the words, sound disappeared. There are two kinds of sounds. There are demonic sounds, and there are sounds that are holy, that are of God. We know that the Holy Spirit revealed to us that there is going to be a major shift in this nation that is coming. A new Sound is coming, that God is shutting down the sounds of the demonic, and he's bringing forth his sound, his sound of healing. And it's even going to be a new free energy that is coming, that is going to be what? The new energy that's coming is going to be what? It's going to be a frequency, a sound. So what is this telling me? The demonic sounds are disappearing. The demonic sounds are disappearing. Exposure is coming. Awakening is coming. Things are being revealed. And God is bringing his sound, his holy sound, which will include God's sound is healing and free energy. Come on. Come on. And all of these people that, have, that are evil, that have caused wars over the years, unnecessary bloodshed, just to put money in their pocket, are being exposed, revealed, and dealt with by the Lord. By the Lord. He comes in with his whirlwind. 
Come on. Now, I was getting a lot of comments where people did not understand this. Okay? So let me tell you something. Let me open this post a little bigger. Now, again, the scripture that goes with this. Jeremiah 33, 3. Call unto me, says the Lord, and I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things, which thou knowest not. Call to me, and I will answer you, and I will show you great and hidden things that you have not known. Ask me, ask me, says the Lord, and I will tell you remarkable secrets you do not know about things to come. You know not because you ask not, my friends. You want to know what's really going on? I pray this prayer every single morning, my prayer for discernment. It's on my website. We must have sharp discernment in these times. Okay? We must decree and declare Jeremiah 33.3. Be like Jeremiah. Ask God to show you the hidden thing, the secret thing, the thing you do not know. Pray this over your loved ones that are not awake right now. Say, Lord, I call unto you. Jeremiah 33.3. is God's phone number. I call unto you, Lord, and you will answer me and show me great and mighty things that I don't know right now. I call to you and you will answer me right now. You will tell me great and hidden things that I have not known. You will show me even what the devil does not want me to know. I ask you now, Father God, and you will tell me the remarkable secrets I do not know about things to come. And not show it not, not just to me, Lord. Show it to my husband. Show it to my children. Come on. This is how I pray. This is how I take the word of God and I pray on it. I speak it. I use it. I enforce it. Now, I have a prayer that's written out for you that same way on my website, according to Jeremiah 33.3. 3. Huh. Now, somebody asked me, Laura, said she loves this. What does it mean when the sound disappeared? Now, this is the Pamlico sound in the Outer Banks of North Carolina that enters the Atlantic Ocean. The entire sound drained out from the storm, as did the Albemarle sound and the Currituck sound. Now, the Currituck sound is the one... That is closest to me, where we did the land assignment and the blood of Jesus Christ washed into the Atlantic Ocean and washed into these three sounds. The Currituck sound, the Albemarle sound, and the, and, and the uh, Pamico sound. So the blood of Jesus Christ is speaking. Now I'm going to open up this map so you can see what I'm talking about. Okay. I live way up here. See where it says duck? See where it says duck? I live just north of there, okay, in Virginia Beach, Virginia. This is the Outer Banks of North Carolina, okay? Now, Mike and I, we've driven down here. This road right here it goes straight up to, you know, my house. Um, we've gone to Kitty Hawk before. We've gone down to Nags Head. We've crossed over these bridges back into North Carolina, um, we've gone all the way down to Rodanthe and all the way down. We've gone all the way down to Hatteras. I've got a picture of me and Mike and Landry um, at the Hatteras Lighthouse. Okay. So what you're seeing here is the Pamlico sound. All the Look how huge that is. Look how huge that is. Look at the Pamlico sound, my friends. Look how huge that is. It was completely drained out to the seabed drained out to the ground there was no water left in the pamlico sap are you guys getting how huge this is are you understanding what i'm telling you here these are islands here hatteras right this is just a little coastal area you can hardly see it this pamlico sound was completely drained down to the dirt the water was completely, you see how huge that is? Now, this bridge right here, I've gone across this bridge before in Rodanthe. Okay? It was completely drained. And not only the Pamlico sound was drained, this Albemarle sound was drained. And the one up above it, the Currituck sound was drained. And just north of there is where we prayed and did the land assignment. Me and Jeanette and Jennifer poured the blood of Jesus and we 
commanded it to wash all the way down into these sounds, into these intercoastals, right? All the way down here. I'm telling you what, this is the blood of Jesus at work. This is the blood of Jesus at work in the land, in the waters, all the way into the depths of the sea. That's speaking a better word because when the blood of Jesus Christ is poured into the sea, when the blood of Jesus Christ is poured into the land, when the blood of Jesus Christ is poured into the waters, it must vomit out and expose everything of the demonic. It must, it must, it must. It has to. This is exactly what's happening, my friends. And for that entire sound to be drained out is incredible. This is a move of God. And we're talking about the bad sound being removed and God bringing in his sound. Hallelujah. 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 Come on. Come on, God. Come on, God. Are y'all getting this? Is this starting to, do you see, do you see the green here? Do you see the green here? That's the sound. She's facing her picture. Okay. This, this shipwreck is, Towards the North Carolina area, you can just slightly see the land, okay? There's even cars going. An entire sound, you see how huge that is? Completely drained. All three of them, Kurtuk, Albemarle, and Chemical Sound. What is God exposing? What is he showing us? He's removing the evil sound and he's bringing in his holy sound and the blood of jesus christ that is speaking in the waters from us doing water assignments is what exposing vomiting up things now i want you to listen to me my friends and i want you to listen really really good we must have strong discernment in these times we must understand that god is speaking through these things this is how the Lord speaks, okay? And if you don't, I had so many people on that post going, I don't understand. What does it mean? I don't understand. I say, open your spiritual eyes. Ask the Lord to open your spiritual eyes. And you will understand what he is saying right now. Decree and declare, Jeremiah 33.3, over yourself, over your family. So the Lord will show you the hidden thing, the secret thing, the thing you do not know. <laughs> he will show you even what the devil doesn't want you to know. Come on. Come on. And you know what really gets me here with this? Is it, one, it wasn't just that the water was drained out. It's what was showing up when it was draining out. God wants to talk about the wars and who's been causing them. Come on. All that bloodshed shed unnecessarily. Why? Because of greed. Because of greed. And God is bringing this to the forefront. Get ready, my friends. This is a major prophetic sign of what's to come. All these evil, wicked people that have been using war to line their pockets. It's over for them. Over! And if you are awake to this, that's good. If you want your loved ones to be awakened to it, pray that Jeremiah 33.3 3 prayer. That the Lord will reveal this to them too. Ask the Lord to open up your spiritual eyes. So you will have understanding when these things are being shown to you that are happening in, in, in nature, that God is speaking about what he's doing in the spirit. God will speak in the natural about what he's doing in the spiritual right now, you see? And then we know how to pray. As watchmen on the wall, we must continue to seek the Lord like Jeremiah did with Jeremiah 33. 3. Many of you are seeing the number 333. 3, 3. 333 three, 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 three. why because the lord wants you to pray that prayer he's got something he wants to reveal to you right now don't just blow it off it's okay lord you're showing me 333 333 333 over and over again why because he has something to show you 
something he wants to reveal to you right now, right now, right now. We must have strong discernment in these days. We must know how God is speaking in the natural about what he's doing in the spiritual. Yes, would it be so much easier if our loved ones were awake to this? Yeah, but only the Holy Spirit can wake them up. Only God himself can awaken them. He did for you, right? So that's why you take that Jeremiah 33, 3 scripture and you go and pray my prayer for discernment according to Jeremiah 33, 3. You pray it over yourself. You pray it over your loved ones. You pray it over everybody that needs to awaken right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Father God, show everyone what you've shown me. Awaken them. Reveal to them the hidden thing, the secret thing, the thing they do not know that they must know right now. Bring them into alignment with your word and your will. Bring us into alignment with what you're doing in the natural, in the spiritual. And God is all about sound. It's all about his sound. The world is held together. We are held together with the voice of God. A sound. Creation, the world was created with what? A sound, a word. Jesus Christ is the sound that holds it all together. God's divine sound of the universe. And the enemy has, since then, has been trying to do what? Put his sound in there. The enemy's sound is the sound of evil, a sound of discord. Trying to come against God's sound of peace and healing and beauty and love. And I had a prophetic word over two years ago. The Lord said, I'm bringing back my sound. The demonic sound is being removed. The demonic sound is being removed. And God's sound is overtaking. And we're going to have what? A frequency of God. To heal our bodies of the 444 and the 432. And President Trump knows this. Tesla, the inventor. I'm talking about Nikola Tesla from the turn of the century. God gave him all of this understanding. And he invented free energy. Why? Because it was already in heaven. Every invention for the earth, for us, is already in heaven. Given to us. But it must be used righteously. Righteously. The enemy wants to take sound and take frequency and use it for evil and use it for discord. But no, no more. It's over for the enemy. God's sound is overtaking. And this sound, this frequency will be used for healing our bodies. Because our bodies are mainly water. And we have that word, watch the water. Why? Because when God's heavenly frequency is, 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 is over the earth, right? And all these demonic frequencies are removed. Our bodies will heal and come into alignment by looking at what? The water crystals in our bodies. The water crystals in our bodies will begin to take beautiful, gorgeous geometric shapes. They'll look like gems. They'll look like snowflakes. You understand? So I knew that President Trump already has this in place. The White House fence. President Trump built a brand new White House fence all the way around the White House. They took that old White House fence down. The old White House fence used to have symbols on it. That were from the Freemasons and the Shriners. Freemasons are Shriners. Shriners are Freemasons. They worship Lucifer. They put up a fence with their little half moon symbol. Uh Uh-uh. No. President Trump had that all taken down. And a new fence was put up with the tip of the spear. The tip of the spear is Joshua. The Joshua of Moses. What did Joshua do? In the battle of Ai. AI represents artificial intelligence. It cannot be used for evil. And what did Joshua have to do to win that battle? He stood on the hill with his spear on his shoulder and the tip of the spear 
pointing towards AI and a top secret covert operation of the good military of the Israelites went in the back door of the city of AI and destroyed it. That's what's happening right now. President Trump is our Joshua. He's the tip of the spear. He's the commander in chief and our good military military is doing a backdoor operation. We don't see everything that's going on right now. But they're taking down all the evil technology that's putting out sounds of discord. They're taking down all this evil. You know what happened in the battle of AI? In your Bible? God said for Joshua and them to kill all the leaders and stack them out of the front of the gates for everybody to see. These people will be tried for treason against humanity. Crimes against humanity. For using this technology and things for evil purposes. And who gets all the plunder? Who gets all the blessing? Us, the people. And we step into our promised land and we have rest on all sides. And let me tell you something. It's already happening. The new White House fence, the Lord show me. You can flip it on and off. This is Trump. They're not going to tear down the White House. The Lord already told me it's going to be a museum. And he had it renovated for Jackie Kennedy's sake, for the sake of the mothers. And true American history will be taught to our children again. And President Donald J. Trump had that fence completely redone because President Trump has all the technology from Tesla because President Trump's uncle, his Uncle John, got all the Tesla papers. All of them. We have this new technology that's been waiting for us, but the evil ones have suppressed it no more. Their sound is silenced. Their sound is drained. It's over for them. Now God's sound is coming forth. And there will be healing in our bodies, and healing in the waters, and healing in the land. And the White House fence was turned on during rain. Remember? When they first turned on the new White House fence, and it puts out a frequency, and I knew it put out a frequency. Because the White House cam, you ever watch that White House cam? It's a camera that's on the White House. It happened to be Kelly Marie Brady's birthday, Nancy Drew, the girl, the wonderful woman that walks around Washington, D.C. and takes videos. And she loves she loves the White House. She loves it. And she's been revealing things. Well, it happened to be her birthday. And they lit the White House up all in red, white, and blue. And she drove back there that night in the rain and ran back there in joy. And she was she was crying in joy. She knew. Her spirit knew. Well, that night, they turned on the new White House fence with a new healing frequency, either 444 or 432. But 444 is the key of David. It's the, it's the key of that King David played his harp, right, and drove out the demons off of Saul and brought unity and healing and peace and calmness. 432 frequency is also a frequency of God. It's this frequency of love. All the old gospel singers, Johnny Cash, Elvis, all tune their guitar to the 432 frequency. You see, the enemy has been trying to sow discord. How's he been trying to sow discord? With sound, with evil sound. No more. His sound has been drained. God's sound is rushing in now. And that night, the White House fence on Kelly Marie Brady's birthday, because the Lord sees her. He sees what she's doing. She's the one documenting all this. I was watching the White House cam that night. The White House was all lit up in red, white, and blue. Fake Biden isn't going to do that. He doesn't even live there. This is all President Trump. He's restoring the White House, my friends. He's the true commander-in-chief. And this new, beautiful fence all around the White House with a new Tesla technology putting out a frequency, the tip of the spear of Joshua. Come on. Free energy for all of us. Healing coming. They turned that fence on that night. You know how I know? Because as I was watching the White House video cam, you know, that night, the water droplets 
on the camera started morphing into beautiful shapes. And I knew. I was like, you're doing it, Lord. You're bringing in your frequency. Watch the water, right? The water in our bodies. We start to see a change in the frequency. And the Lord also told me that the wall that President Trump built at the the southern border, and we actually have proof of this, where somebody put a tuning fork on that wall. It's very slight right now. It's not up to full power yet. It's also going to be putting out a frequency. Healing frequency. The frequency of God's voice that holds everything together. You see, why do you think you start to feel anxiety and you you start to not feel well? It's because there's demonic frequencies around you. Getting God's frequency of your creator. And this isn't new age woo-woo stuff. This is God. And God revealed this to Nikola Tesla. And now President Trump has all this information. And the enemy's tricks, his sound is being drained. It's being silenced. And God's sound and frequency is coming in. And when I saw that, I knew. I knew. You know, the fact that this happened on the Outer Banks and a few years ago, when I saw, we, we drove over that sound, and we drove over that water, and my husband Michael and I and Landry, we went down to Hatteras, and we went to the lighthouse in Hatteras, and lighthouses really speak to me. They really speak to me, because that's who we are, right? And that's who Jesus is. That's who, right? The Lord is a strong tower. And we all run to him. We all run to his strong tower. And we are the light. We are the city on the hill. We must continue to shine our light. And I have this wonderful picture. I hope David puts it up of me and my husband, Michael, and my daughter, Landry. We made it all the way down there to the Hatteras Lighthouse. Oh, my gosh. Landry was about maybe 14. There is a picture. But you know what's really interesting? When we went there, there's uh, Big Mike, <laughs> my husband, and me. <laughs> there's there's my husband, Michael, all six, five of him, and me, uh, five, three. My daughter, Landry, she's already taller than me now. She was about 14 there. We drove down to Hatteras for the first time and went to the lighthouse. And it was probably about like 2004. 14, 2015, and I told Landry, we need to go back there again, and when the Lord shows me lighthouses, he reminds me, right, we are to be the light, we are to be the lighthouse, we are to draw people to our light, the light of Christ, and we are to draw people to his light, And not only are we to be a sound for Jesus Christ and a sound for the Lord, we are to be his light. So I want to encourage you. We must be salt and light. We must be sound and light for the Lord. We must carry his sound. We must carry his word. We must carry his light. And um, both places that the Lord had me go to, uh, to pray, especially the first landing cross north of that, was uh, a lighthouse. And we must be like lighthouses for the Lord, you know? And I even decree that over myself, and I decree it over every single one of you right now. You are a lighthouse for the Lord, and you carry his sound. You carry his word, Right? You are a lighthouse for the Lord, and you carry his sound, and you carry his word. Right? We follow Jesus. He is the light of the wor- Lord, light of the world. But Jesus also said that we are light, that we are like a city 
on a hill. Our light cannot be hidden. It cannot be hidden under a basket. And the enemy wants to, he wants to hide our light. He wants to muffle our sound. He wants to cause discord. No, we are to shine bright for the Lord, our families. Right? Just decree and declare that over yourself right now. I am a lighthouse for the Lord. My husband and my children are lighthouse for the Lord. I carry his sound. I carry his word within me. I carry his healing frequency and his light. We walk in the light of the Lord. We walk in the light of the Lord. We walk in the light. We walk in the light. We walk in the light of the Lord. We carry the sound of glory. We carry the sound of glory. We carry the sound. We carry the sound. We carry the sound of glory. Come on. Thank you, David. So you are a lighthouse for the Lord. You carry his sound of glory. Get into the frequency of God. Shine your light. Do not let the enemy try to take your sound. Do not let the enemy try to take your light. Yes, these healing uh, things are coming. This free energy is coming. This frequency, right? But it must also start with us as individuals, my friends. We must shine our light for Christ. We must carry his sound, his frequency. Carry the word, right? The word of God is the will of God. When we carry Jesus Christ, we carry his word, we carry his sound, we carry his frequency, we carry his light. We are glory carriers. We carry the frequency of God. We carry his word. We are lighthouses for the Lord. We carry the sound of the Lord. Our bodies are mainly made up of water. So how do we get that frequency into our bodies, into our sound right by by speaking his word, by filling up with his word, by getting into the frequency of God and his word and worshiping him, worshiping him, worship God with every cell in your body and every cell of your being, shine your light. Because we carry Jesus. We carry him. We want people drawn to our light, which is Christ who is within us. We want people drawn to our sound and our words and our worship because that's the word, Christ Jesus, who is within us. And the angels of the Lord encampeth around those and are attracted to those who are carrying the worship, carrying the sound, carrying the light. You know, my friends, The enemy does everything he can to try to muffle our sound or or throw discord into our sound. Do not let him. Right? The enemy does everything he can to try and block our light. Don't let him. Shine on. Shine on brightly. And this is what God is doing. He's doing this in us as individuals. He's doing this in our families. He's doing it in the land. He's doing it through President Donald J. Trump and the the good military and those who are called by the Lord to bring back this, um, well, actually to drive out the sounds of discord and drive out the works of the enemy. But where does it start with? Our prayers. Our prayers. Our prayers and our worship are our frequency unto heaven. Our prayers and our worship are frequency that are poured out upon the earth. We must continue to pray. We must continue to worship. We must continue to speak that this is a time of peace and harmony of God. Sound. He speaks through us. He releases his sound through us. He releases his light through us. I was so glad I still have that picture of when we went to the lighthouse. And um, I also have this picture uh, when we went to the first landing cross. And this is also um, a where a lighthouse is. This is my one of my very first visits with my family. 
I knew the Lord was leading me, um, you know, to uh, the first landing cross, which is uh, completely straight north from the Hatteras Lighthouse. Um, you can come up here to Virginia Beach and go to um, uh, well, it's actually Fort Story. It's actually a military base. So it's northern Virginia Beach, and it's where the first landing cross is. There's also a lighthouse there, Cape Henry Lighthouse, yeah, uh, the Cape Henry. So uh, I'm going to share that with you all. If you, if you like my old family pictures, <laughs> David can put those up. That's when I was uh, first called by the Lord um, to go and come back there and pray. And that's where the Cape Henry Lighthouse is. David can put up those pictures. I'm, I'm sharing all these with you. So the Lord is calling us to these places to go and pray, to do communion, to be boots on the ground intercessors, to be the tip of the spear, right? To be like Joshua. God will give you every place you put your feet to proclaim that the, the, that land belongs to the Lord, to call forth the sound of God and um, to be that light in the darkness, you know? And we know that this is all coming to pass. David, you can share those um, pictures. Okay. That was uh, about the same year, maybe a year before. I don't know if it was a year before or a year after. Uh, we went to the first landing cross there in Cape Henry. There's also a lighthouse there. That is uh, me, my husband Michael, me and my daughter Landry. She was about maybe 13 there. Uh, we went back there in 2016 with my church and prayed and that is a main gateway to our nation that it's a commemorative granite cross originally in 1605 uh reverend james hunt with the jamestown expedition uh they came and fasted for three days on the ship and uh when they got off the ship they all kneeled down in the sand and planted a wooden cross and in that spot and reverend james hunt spoke a prophetic word that from these very shores of this land shall go out to all the world the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, and to this land shall go forth the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, and he blessed this land and all the inhabitants thereof. So what that means is that this land was founded for the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. This nation was founded for the gospel and also to spread the gospel to all the world. Okay, and there's a second picture. I felt compelled uh, by the Holy Spirit to kneel down and pray that day. That was back in maybe 2014. It was right before the Lord started calling me to ministry. And I just felt overwhelmed by the Lord. And I just was, I was praying there. And my husband took a picture and just asking the Lord what he was asking of me. I didn't know. I just felt drawn to that place. And that's where we did our very first land assignment. And now, wow, <laughs> look at all the land assignments since then. But the first place that we poured the communion, the very first land assignment that this ministry ever did was right there at the first landing cross. Right over there to the right of the cross, there's a rose garden. And that's where the communion was first poured there. And um, it's been very powerful ever since. Now we've got boots on the ground for you all everywhere. Thank you, David. So this is how it all began. And it starts with just hearing from the Lord and not ignoring it. And saying, is he calling me? Right? Is he drawing me? Yes, he is. Anyway, you can go, you can go on my Facebook or, um, you know, any of the land assignment index. You can go back and look at all of our land assignments and everywhere we've been. But is the Lord sending you to a certain place? Are you drawn to a certain place? Are you, you drawn there? It's because he's telling you to go pray there. <laughs> I'm telling you. I'm, I, I, really. Take it seriously. If you're being drawn to a certain place, he's telling you go and pray there. He's looking for his boots on the ground intercessors right now. And since that day that we 
visited the first landing cross all those years ago, and I knelt at that cross, I knew the Lord was calling me to a great assignment, but I wasn't sure what it was. You know, we just took a drive after church that day and said, let's go down and see it. And um, since then, wow, what the Lord has done. Okay, and that was back in 2014, right before I was called to ministry. And now we have, David put the map up. David, would you put the map up again? I'm just in awe of God. I'm in awe of God. Since that day in 2014, when I knelt at that cross, the Lord has called me into ministry, and this has been the assignment of this ministry to get all of you to go and pray on the land at all these locations, repent for the sins of that land, get the communion in the ground, get the anointing in the ground, even do it in the waters. At the gates. So it can be redeemed by the blood of Jesus. And then the blood of Jesus Christ speaks a better word there. And then the heavenly host and the warrior angels of God come and take dominion of that region. And the demonic sound, the demonic principalities are driven out. Because they've lost their legal right to be there because of the blood of Jesus. And the sins have been covered in the blood of Jesus. And the anointing to dedicate it back to God. And then... The power of God comes and moves in those regions. And everything of the demonic must be vomited out and removed. And God comes in with his angel armies and his frequencies and his sound and his victory and his blessing. All for the kingdom and the glory of God through Christ Jesus who works through us. Look at God and how far he has brought this. Every single red dot you see, and this isn't even all of it. It's going all around the world. Started with that day, kneeling at that cross in the picture you just saw. And it wasn't me, it was God. All I did was say yes. Look how much God wants to use you and your family. Thank you, David. We are part of this brilliant plan of God. It's not just President Trump. It's not just the good military. It's not just the U.S. Marshal and the U.S. Marshals and the 82nd Airborne and all this stuff. It's not Q and the Anons. It's us too. The body of Christ in our prayers. It all starts with prayer and obedience and faith. And just say, yes, Lord, send me. I'll be boots on the ground for you. And once the blood of Jesus Christ is in that land, watch what God does. We're getting praise reports all the time. All the time. And we have the training here. So you don't get any pushback from the enemy. You do this safely. But I'm just in awe of God right now. And when I look back at those pictures, I think about, wow, God. He did all of it. He paid for all of it. He brought all of you. All I had to do was say yes. And he gave me the steps. And he'll do the same for you. We must be the light. We must walk in the light of the Lord. We can't be afraid, no matter how old we are, how young we are, to be used by God. And this ministry is giving you a way to do that very easily, to be a boots-on-the-ground intercessor. We must continue to pray as God is working out his brilliant plan. We must do our part. We're part of the plan. And it's glorious. Like I said, God trusted you enough. You and I and your children to be born at this time when the great awakening is happening. When the kingdom of God is coming to earth through us, the believers in Christ. When God is dealing with the wicked and driving out and rooting out all wickedness. It's the wicked that will disappear from the face of the earth. Psalm 37 
You'll look around for them and they'll be gone. You won't know where they went. And it's the righteous that will inherit the earth. It's happening. And the great harvest of souls for Jesus Christ. Shall we not be a worker in the harvest? Come on. He takes care of everything. And not only that, preparing the bride of Christ for her king, her bridegroom. That's the sound of trumpets. Do you know when the the bridegroom picks up his bride in Israel, in Jerusalem, in Nazareth? They blow trumpets. It's the sound of a wedding. And Jesus' bride, the church, must not be like a beat-up, run-over doormat. He's not coming back for a beat-up, bruised bride. He's coming back for a bride that is beautiful, bold and beautiful, shining, prepared perfectly for her husband. Not a spot or wrinkle. Everything is just perfect. Come on, my friends. These are the most glorious, beautiful, amazing of times. And God trusted us enough and our children to be alive during these times to be used for his plans and purposes. Just seek him, ask him, and he will lead you by his Holy Spirit. Be be the light, be the sound, be a glory carrier for the Lord. Because the enemy's sound is being drained out. And God's sound is filling everything. Our bodies, the atmosphere, the cities, the states, the nations, the seas, the mountains. It reminds me of that song that the Lord gave me a while back and Susie Q put music to it. He's Lord over the waters. He's Lord over the seas. He's Lord over the rocks and stones. And he's Lord over me. My Lord, my Lord, my Lord. You have it all. My Lord, my Lord, my Lord. You have me. My Lord, my Lord, my Lord. You have it all. So get into my boat. And we shall sail away. I can't remember how to say that. I need the words again. Susie Q added some words. But the Lord said, he, I thought it was a poem. I woke up one morning with these words in my spirit. And I wrote it down. And I thought it was a poem. And I read it to all of you. And then that afternoon, the Lord said, it's not a poem. It's a song. And he said, I've given Susie Q the melody for the song. And she put it together. And he gave her a few more words with it. And it's just precious. It's all about Jesus. It's all about him. And he's so beautiful and so wonderful. And he lives in you. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. I love you all so much. This has been a beautiful time together.